There's an advantage if you're small and new in entering the market early. There's a bicycle in that suitcase. Uh, it's a, my traveling bike. It folds up. You take it apart. You fold it up. You put it in the suitcase. You go someplace. You open up the suitcase and put it back together and take it apart when you fly out. Now, putting a bicycle together and cramming it in a suitcase can be a little difficult the first time you do it. But the more you do it, the better you get because you've learned from your own mistakes. That's called learning curve advantage. Basically, the more you do it, the better at you get. And just like there's learning curve advantages in production processes, there's learning curve advantages in entering markets. There's other aspects to first mover advantage. For example, the first people in the market start to build trust relationships with stakeholders and customers. Trust just takes time to build, and so they get that advantage. And over time, those trust relationships turn into business, supporting regulations, all sorts of things. They also know how to play. So if there's a standards body that's relevant to what they're doing, they'll get somebody on that standards body because they learn that's an important part of selling. Nonetheless, if you're a little bigger, a little more established, being first in may not be necessary. You can use the second or third in strategy. In that case, here's an example of what I mean by that. What you're seeing here are uh, some socket wrenches. And the socket wrenches, so that's my head coming through. The socket wrenches here that we're looking at are these kind. They are, uh, have a hole in the middle and they actually are ratchets on them. And they're designed for people like me who have trouble and strip nuts too often. If I need to tighten it just a little, I have this piece. And so that's like being second or third in the market. You learn, gee, that's what uh, happened to them. They were doing the equivalent of stripping all those bolts. And they sort of had this idea of getting something around to solve it, and we'll design it better. We'll put a ratchet in it, and we'll really solve the problem that way. So you can come in second or third that way. A good exit strategy, by the way, if, if you're a first in and you're successful, is the big guys come along later on, and they're like, well, I want to get in that market, but you know, why should I learn? I'll just buy a company that's there already. And that gives you an exit strategy. Okay, so when you're coming into a market, the first thing you got to worry about is are you competitive? The second thing you got to worry in the competition is do they have brand name recognition, all these other kinds of things? Third thing is what other advantages do they have? They have first mover advantages. Do they have um, supply advantages? They've cornered uh, the titanium market and I need titanium for this. Whole series of things you're looking at. Do they have long term supply sell contracts that's going to make it hard for me to bust into it? And, you know, do the vendors I'm competing with have that? All those questions go to uh, the competition. It's not enough to just look at do I have a performance advantage. You've got to look at the other aspects that lead a company to have power in a marketplace. Talk to you shortly.